Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and this is being shot with the brand new Insta360 X3 action camera. And it is a full 360 degree camera. And I've got to say, I've had more fun with this than I think any other camera ever. And what I really love about this is that you can capture everything and then frame and edit it later in the app. So I can show you that way. I can show you that way. We can go upwards if you like, or I can extend this selfie stick up to three meters to get a kind of drone shot overhead. This is an incredibly versatile action camera and it's been a lot of fun having a play with it. So a big thank you to Insta360 for sending this out for me to have a play with and also sponsoring this video. Although as always, all opinions are my own. And basically I just want to show you everything you can do with this. Oh, and also a big thank you to Pete and James who helped me make this video. And actually this was a bit of a team effort. And if you do enjoy the video, a like and subscribe would be lovely. So following on from the Insta360 One X2, we now have the Insta360 X3. They've dropped the one part of the name. And actually this comes with a whole bunch of new tricks and new features that makes it stand out as one of the best and most versatile action cameras you can buy. For starters, it can record 5.7K full 360 video. And thanks to new larger half inch sensors, we're getting better image quality with less noise. And the new 360 Active HDR mode balances detail in light and darker areas of the scene. And single lens mode turns this into a regular action camera using one of the two cameras to record sharp 4K 30 footage. 360 audio uses the four built-in microphones, meaning your voice and sounds should be clear no matter which direction you're holding it. And the X3 also has plenty of official accessories, though it should also work with most regular GoPro style mounts. Also new, you can now take full 360 photos at up to a huge 72 megapixels. And it also works underwater down to 10 meters or 33 feet. And there's even a 4K 120 bullet time mode, which gets you shots like this. And so like with the 360 video, you can then pop it into the Insta360 app on your uh, phone, Android, iOS, or on your PC. I've got it on my MacBook here. And then you can edit and reframe your footage however you like. I mean, just look at that. I'm editing and reframing it on the fly. Looks great. That is very cool. Setup is simple. You just charge it up and then pop in your micro SD card and you're good to go. Then it's just a case of choosing what mode, resolution, and frame rate you want using the 2.29 inch tempered glass touchscreen or using the quick select button and then just hit record. And it's the full 5.7K 360 degree video that's the killer feature here. The dual hemispherical lenses each record 180 degrees and then the processing stitches them together, removing any selfie sticks from the image. Well, most of the time. And this tops out at 30 FPS, although you can get 60 if you drop the res to 4K. And so next to a regular action cam, like the GoPro Hero 10, for example, this means you don't need to worry about setting up your shot. You can just reframe it in the app afterwards and export it in whichever aspect ratio you want. So 16 by nine for YouTube or nine by 16 for your Instagram reels or TikTok. It really is a case of shoot first, reframe and edit later. So for example, while you can see I can move around, uh, this is uh, in the Insta360 app. Once you export it, ideally in ProRes, you'll get the full uh, quality. And then what you can do is set keyframes by pressing the little plus button down here. And then you can adjust the pan angle, the roll, the uh, field of view, all sorts of things. So you can't really miss the shot, which is a huge deal. And also beyond that, you can probably use the same piece of footage multiple times if you wanted to, just with different settings. You can see James has been having some fun with this. He does have his arm stuck out here while he's riding it because he's holding the selfie stick with the camera on it. So while it does remove the camera and the stick, you're still gonna have your arm stuck out like that. That's worth bearing in mind. And also if you're wondering why I didn't do this, it's because I can't really run a bike. Don't tell anyone though. <laughs> And for me as a YouTube creator, I'm always trying to get shots that are more interesting, more dynamic, and possibly even more relatable. And often just basic tripod panning shots just bore everyone to death. This kind of stuff is so much more interesting and it's all from this. It looks like I've got a FPV drone flying through the woods here or it's an uh, outtake from Return of the Jedi. <laughs> And if your camera slips out of position, you don't have to lose the shot like you would on a regular action cam. You can just reframe it later on. If you do pick one of these up, just have some fun with it. Try the different modes. I guarantee you, you're gonna have a lot of fun and actually you're gonna get some surprisingly good results. Also, despite this being a very bumpy ride, the X3 has some of the best stabilization I've seen. Even these handheld selfie stick shots are great thanks to the flow state horizon leveling, which keeps the horizon more or less flat no matter which angle you're holding it. And even mounted to an RC car gave us some nice smooth footage while the car itself was shaking and bumping along. 
all we did was reframe our shots to make it look like swivels. Now most shots require either a mount, like a suction cup onto a car or something, or this guy, which is the three meter long Insta360 selfie stick, which I'm not sure if I have quite enough room in here to fully extend it. Thou shall not pass. It is huge and it shrinks down to just that. Although you do get a few looks if you walk around town with this fully extended over your head. Just be aware though of shadows as the processing can't remove these like it does with the selfie stick itself. If you hold it extended a meter or so behind you, then you can get a cool third person gaming style perspective, which makes for great time lapse or sped up footage. Or better yet, get yourself a beefy suction mount and stick it to your car for a seriously cool racing game look. I absolutely love this. Or even hold it way above your head and you can get some cool walk around lapse shots like this one around the Glastonbury Tour. The 5.7K resolution is spread over the full 360, so the 4K single lens mode will offer slightly finer quality video, and also frame rate does top out at 30 FPS in the main 360 modes. But importantly, and like all action cams, ideally you want to shoot this in well lit conditions. Lighting is everything. Also, not every shot suits the wide fisheye field of view, but you can easily flatten this out in the app to give a more natural appearance. Or you can just have a bit of fun with the crystal ball mode, or my favorite tiny planet, which can have some unintentionally hilarious results. Now I will say that some images were a little softer than I'd like, and also the stitching between both hemispheres is usually good, although you do get an obvious seam when the crossover point is over more detailed areas like these paving slabs. But luckily the apps have a couple of extra intelligent stitching options which can help. Now one of the new modes, 360 Active HDR, attempts to draw out more detail from darker and brighter areas of the image. And it did work well in the woods, but in some conditions, especially with direct sunlight on one lens, but not the other, it could vary its exposure a little too often. And so there's some obvious mismatch between lenses. As for single lens mode, you get a 180 degree image at 4K 30 with a 120 megabits per second bitrate from either camera. It's basically GoPro mode that films where you point it. And side by side with the GoPro Hero 10 with its higher single lens resolution, it's clear the 360 cam's FOV is wider by default, although you can adjust this later. Although bear in mind the new Hero 11 will be coming out soon as well. But if you want the best quality 360 image, then you'll want to use the new 72 megapixel photo mode. This is the highest resolution in any 360 camera and it captures a ton of detail and gives you as many options to reframe as the video does. Again though, ideally you'll want well lit conditions. Okay, let's dig a little bit deeper with the many, many modes this has to offer. We took the camera to our local outdoor market and got a few funny looks from people as we captured them for a few minutes. And you can easily add or remove motion blur in the app. And while I can't show you the full 8K output in this 4K YouTube video, in either case, the detail is incredible. Then there's this, the Insta360 bullet time accessory. This literally just uh, screws into the bottom of the camera and you can then pull it out as far as you like. And then I would suggest pinching in here uh, at the end so it doesn't uh, retract in. And then you can basically throw the camera around you, and, uh, you know, above or to the side and get yourself some cool bullet time effects. Just make sure you don't smash anything. You record at 4K 120 or 3K 180 and then slow it down to 30 for that slow-mo bullet time. I'm sure you could manage a cooler effect than me with this and it's something I definitely want to play with more. Then there's nose mode where you hold the camera up to your face or even in your mouth to get some weirdly ultra close-up shots. I couldn't get this to look anything but a bit unpleasant, but happily Insta360 sent me this video of a man demonstrating this better than I ever could. That is someone definitely living his best life. And this is being shot with me mode. That is Sylvie the cat. So I'm using this on the very short selfie stick just in front of me. Uh, and it's kind of meant for vlogging. Let me know what you make of the footage. This is me mode. Also, say you're using this as a dash cam or somewhere else where you need to capture footage after the event, Insta360 are planning a firmware update which will allow you to pre-record 15 or 30 seconds before you hit the record button. Now the camera is really only half the story. To get the shot you want, as I say, you'll need the AI powered Insta360 mobile app or the studio editing app on your PC or your Mac. All are free, just connect your X3 via Bluetooth or USB. 
You can add extra camera positions and control the type of transition between them. You can change speeds with time shift or use the deep tracking function to have the AI dynamically track a subject you choose. And the Studio app has even more options that make it my preferred choice for editing. Also, ShotLab in the mobile Insta360 app offers a few fun options like SkySwap, which lets you, well, swap out the sky for something a bit more dynamic. Okay, so my cameraman and videographers aren't really out of jobs. This is just going to be another tool that I add to my arsenal. And actually, in some ways, especially when I do a lot of car videos, it's always tricky to get those shots. You usually have to use a chase car, and often it can be a bit difficult and a bit dangerous. Now I can stick this onto the car, maybe onto the bonnet or at the back, or you could attach it to the shorter 120 centimeter selfie stick, which is lighter and maybe a better option for most of us than the whopping three meter one to get yourself some of those drone style shots which is very useful because most of the time you're not allowed to fly a drone, but no one's telling you you can't walk around looking like a bit of an idiot, but getting a similar kind of shot. Downsides? Well, just be aware that the lenses do stick out. They are proud of the camera, so these may get damaged, so be a bit careful, although it does come with a little pouch that you can put it in to keep it safe. Just bear that in mind, especially if you're spinning it around in bullet time mode. And also, while the video quality may not be as sharp as a dedicated single lens action camera, I think all the added versatility you get with this makes it worth it. And so for me, this is the best action cam I've ever tested, and it's going straight in my camera bag. But what do you make of it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you are tempted to pick one up yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you do want to see more from me, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.